Yeah, hi, I'm Dr. Al Plechner. Dr. Plechner, can you tell us the importance of understanding cortisol and where the fear of cortisone began? Yeah, the, it's interesting. Uh, cortisol has taken a bad rap for many, many years. Uh, cortisol is a natural production that you that is very necessary if you're going to maintain proper health in your body or in the body of your animal. Uh, people will produce 30 to 35 units. Uh, but uh, people are, are definitely afraid of this. And, and I think where the fear came from was uh, in 1948, uh, there were a the pair of medical brothers who've done beautiful work had used a synthetic called cortisone acetate at very high levels to treat their arthritis patients. The results were good, but the side effects were uh, not good. And so at that time, they published a paper on the X substance, which was cortisol. And from there on out, everybody's been afraid of steroids. Oh, you can't use steroid. You can't use cortisol because it's going to cause nothing but problems. The realization of it is, is that you better be producing it in proper amounts. Uh, otherwise, you will have major diseases like allergies, autoimmunity, and cancer. Uh, the interesting thing about uh, using, using cortisol is that when I first came out of school, I wondered how come a steroid works so well? I mean, with an in, in inflammation, with allergies, how come it, it's doing so well? What, what is it really uh, about? So I started checking cortisol levels in my animals, and guess what? They had imbalances. They were deficient. And so unwittingly, we as veterinarians, and I think MDs, have been funding a deficiency in cortisol that's never been measured before. And one of the hang-ups with doing, or the problems with doing a cortisol measurement is measuring it by itself or even doing uh, salivary tests or urine tests for it and doing levels at every four to six hours doesn't tell you whether the body can utilize it or not. The cortisol needs to work with the pituitary, uh, and what it does is it does its job in the body. Uh, it regulates the immune system, and then when it goes to the liver, uh, liver breaks it down, kidneys excrete it. Once that level is, is uh, low or deficient or you know, low in the body, the, uh, the hypothalamus, which we don't need to go into, but the hypothalamus lets the pituitary know that the pituitary needs to release some of this hormone, the ACTH, so that'll make the middle layer adrenal cortex release more cortisol. So this is a negative feedback that goes back and forth. And one of the hangups is if you don't measure what the cortisol does in the body, like with the negative feedback to the pituitary, if that cortisol, even in large amounts, is inactive or defective, it won't be recognized by the pituitary. So what happens is the pituitary keeps pumping out its ACTH, its hormone, and uh, since the middle layer adrenal can't respond, the inner layer adrenal cortex responds, and this is where your male and female hormones come from in high levels. So if you are considering a cortisol imbalance in a patient, you definitely have got to do total estrogen. And at the same time, you do thyroid because that total estrogen will bind the receptor sites, and you'll end up with what I call a metabolic hypothyroidism. And with all of this, then, it will free up your immune system to lose recognition of self tissue. And this is when all of a sudden your immune cells are acting against your body. And this is why it's so important to do comparative cortisol levels to estrogen, to the antibodies, uh, which will let you know whether that cortisol is active or not. So that's been the hang up is one, uh, everybody's been afraid of it since 1948. Two, they really don't understand it. Three, they know it works, but they're afraid of it. And the other end, too, is in dogs and in humans, many times if you fund a cortisol imbalance, to keep that cortisol in a 24-hour level, you've got to use thyroid with it. Cats, it's different. Horses, it's different. But in humans and in dogs, if you're going to use a cortisol replacement, you've got to have thyroid uh, to kick up the metabolism of the liver and the, the excretion rate of the kidneys so that in 24 hours the cortisol is out of the system. Otherwise, you'll have a buildup. So in 24 hours, you may have uh, a little bit of cortisol. In a week, you're going to have plenty of it, and pretty soon you got side effects. And this may have been one of the problems with the gals that took Primarin, an estrogen supplement, without the thyroid. So in 24 hours, they had Primarin left. 
two weeks, they had plenty of Premarin. A month or two down the road, they had breast cancer, cervical cancer, ovarian cancer. So determining if cortisol is active or inactive is catamount to what we're doing. It's got to be done. has to be done. And this is a major uh, player in Plechner syndrome. 